Hi there, uh, I'm Ray Bowling of SwapFlux, and today I'm recording for the second time uh, the very first video in a series of demos that feature the biggest foot, my first Euro rack module. Um, the way I'm doing these is going to be sort of these uh, focused jams, and the jams will hopefully become an album. Well, they definitely will. I'll, they'll be on Bandcamp, link in the description or whatever. And uh, yeah, so instead of talking about features solely, what I wanted to do is talk about music making in the context of having a balance board available. And so I've got, you know, me, I can talk to you. I've got sort of a, you know, this is a tiny setup so that we can move through features quickly and focus more on technique. Um, and each one of the videos, I'll try to set up something totally different. What I have is essentially a drum machine sequencer. We've got a Buchla style sequencer here, uh, which was made by Sputnik and I believe is now discontinued. Uh, moving to the right again, we've got Neutron Sounds Organ Accumulator, which um, also believe it's not available anymore. This is sort of a, a digital voice that has a bunch of different modes and um, you can select the mode here and then pick the mode that you want to get different sorts of uh, FM or uh, I'm putting it in a drum mode because I'm gonna focus on percussion. So that final mode requires a trigger to get going. Then uh, I've got the output of that via the green cable going into my good friend Ray's uh, Crest uh, module, which does drive and wave folding. Gets pretty loud. Woo, there go your ears. Right, and then of course, the biggest foot, which right now isn't doing anything. The first thing I want to do is find something to modulate. I think this module is maybe a little too hot for modulation. I'm going to leave it to manual control uh, for the time being. Maybe we'll patch it later. But the most immediate things I know how to modulate are the things on the organ accumulator directly. The way this module works, there's a A, B, and C that we can scan through. The B is sort of like the, the basis of the whole thing. And I feel like it really just kind of fades between A and C. And B is kind of always there. It's kind of how I feel about it. But um, let's do a really, really basic demonstration. I'm going to put the biggest foot into board mode. So when you press board right here, ignoring the shift functionality, it flips between two different modes. One is the little face, which indicates that lefty is taking over movement. When you see the rainbow color, that's what that means. So as I turn sensitivity up, we're just gonna get random movement, which can be controlled by the speed dial. Let's hear what that sounds like on B. So that's not that different from just a free running LFO. Uh, right now, let's see the, um, I'm mostly getting a negative voltage uh, because for whatever reason, lefty's kind of hanging out on the left side and I patched into the right side. 
Important to note, what I'm demoing today is the bipolar outputs. And there is a special reason for that. And it's because of my posture today. I am sitting, which is something that I wasn't able to show off easily at Nobcon. Uh, but there are special advantages. One of the most obvious special advantages is that I can take my feet completely off of the board without changing my posture, which you can't do while standing. And um, so I hit the board button again, I'll switch to me, uh, and releasing off of the board, you see this output get a little bit red. So that's now a negative output. Um, let's calibrate. I'm gonna tap the button on the front of the board with my toe and get calibration dude and rest my legs until he turns green. And sure enough, pressing on the left side, if I turn sensitivity up, this is a little more obvious, push on the reds on the left side and the right turns red, push on the right side and the right turns blue. Very straightforward. The corners in unipolar and bipolar are a little bit louder, a little bit cleaner. So, uh, you know, that's, a, that's always been the case. But the special advantage that you get from bipolar mode, notice how these two corners, uh, if I tap with my toe here, I'll get blue, right? If I tap with my toe here, I'll get blue there, right? So, Let's look at what happens to the side, which is in between the two. And you might think of this as a negative X if this was a joystick. Releasing becomes negative, right? And when I press down on that corner, it becomes neutral. So it takes the sum of these two and you get zero. So there's sort of a more exclusive output and a distinction between all three of these outputs versus pressing on the top corner. And we get, you know, the complete opposite of that. And as I press with my whole foot, we'll get all three. So you can get more of a rolling motion with your foot in bipolar mode, which isn't really possible with unipolar mode. Uh, and this is a new feature that was not demonstrated in the prototypes. It's only in the production model. So let's actually play with it. Maybe I'll put pitch modulation on the top. And this C, uh, this uh, mod dial right here, let me put that on the bottom. Actually, I think I want the, the top here. Right, so now, see, this is, these videos are more about technique. So I can roll my heel back to get bass, and I can push forward to get uh, more of a hi-hat, hi snare sort of thing going on. Like, I know this sounds like a hi-hat right now, but it's bassy. And we can record a sequence if I take the gate sort of the, or the pulse that's coming out of this sequencer and plug it into the trigger input. And now, get this a little bit out of the way, uh, selecting 
these steps is as easy as, you know, clockwise takes fewer steps because they are faster. So uh, let's do 16 steps. <laughs> and as I cross fade up. It seems that I'm playing in double time now. And I guess I need to double the number of steps. And I can resynchronize it by pressing the trig. sequencer a little bit more involved and we'll take a chord from the top row and put it into volt per octave. board button and bring it back to lefty who's going to be able to now add some randomness to the sequence that I put in. uncontrollably moving my body it's a perfect opportunity to actually switch back to board mode and start to fade back in showing you before about the sides now actually also applies to the center so when my feet are on because I calibrated it like this I actually get zero out of the center and now leaning forward in my seat should make it bring out a positive voltage but taking my feet off makes it turn negative Let me put that on the frequency modulation so that I can lean in for more intensity. We'll 
you'll see the blob get bigger because I'm applying more pressure to everything. modulate uh, C because I just think it'll sound a little cooler with the sequencer over here. I'm going to put it on CVC because that makes the most sense. Something I like to do sometimes is make like a really short sequence and then uh, fade that in. Let me do that real quick. And then uh, turn the speed all the way up to one beat. And then start to fade it in. And then play with the clock division. 